Hey, welcome back to the channel where we talk all things engineering, technology, and finance. Before getting into today's content, make sure you hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So that way you're up to date on all the latest content that we post to our channel. And lastly, make sure you share the video with friends and family. As I always say, we don't want to hoard the knowledge for ourselves and we want everybody to learn. So let's jump into today's content. Welcome to my Windows 11 computer here where we're going to tackle a request by one of our subscribers and a big shout out to Jamie. Jamie says, I'd like to see a video where you actually use the controls in the security suite specifically to block access to websites with parental controls. So in this video, we're going to tackle just that. So stick around. First order of business, we're going to make sure that we open up our Spectrum Internet Security, which is already running on my machine. And if you don't have this available on your machine, I'll put a link in the description of the previous video that I did to show you how to get this if you're a Spectrum Internet customer. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on parental controls and we're going to edit the parental controls. And in here, we're going to click on settings and up comes the parental controls that you see here for the user accounts. So we're going to go ahead and click on the user account that we want to control. And we're going to turn on the content filtering. And as you can see here, there's a couple of things that you can do uh, when you can filter. And some of the filtering that you see here is adults, drugs, gambling, disturbing content, illegal downloads, anything with like hate speech, weapons, dating, all different kinds of things that you can see here that you can filter by. So we're going to leave all the defaults here for our child profile. And remember, you want to click the profile that you're adding the parental controls for. And then the other option that you saw me click here is the search results filter. So it also allows you to filter out any of those things that you don't want your children to see within spaces such as YouTube, DuckDuckGo, so on and so forth. The next available parental control that is available to us is called time limits. And time limits, when you enable it, gives you the ability to set daily limit in hours for your child to use the computer. And the cool thing about it is you can see here that there is also the allowed hour section. And in the allowed hour section, you have days of the week and also times within that day of the week to adjust. So that way, let's say, for example, we only want our child to use the computer for an hour a day. We can go in and pick a specific day of the week and also a time slot in which they can use that one hour. So say, for example, as you can see here, me adjusting the time in the schedule, if I only want my child to use the computer from 10 in the morning to 2 p.m. or 1400 hours, you can see me adjusting that in the calendar here so that anywhere between 10 in the morning and 2 p.m., the child has the ability to use that one hour of screen time. And it's really cool where the program actually will make sure that the child doesn't use the computer outside of those hours. The last thing we're going to do is just adjust the daily limit in hours. So make sure that's set to one. And as you can see here, we have one hour in total and the use is going to be between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. With our parental controls all set up, we can go ahead and sign out out of the parent account or your account that you're using to control somebody else. And we can sign in into the other profile that we were controlling. In this case, it's called child. We are going to show you what it looks like when the parental controls are in effect based on the settings that we put in the other profile, which was the parental profile. Now that we are in the profile, the first feature that came up immediately, as you see here, is time to have a break. And as you recall, when we were putting together the schedule in the allowed hours, I put in 10 a.m. in the morning. And the problem is, is if you take a quick pause when we log into the computer, you can see that it's before 10 a.m. So it's actually going to kick us out and we have to wait until 10 a.m. to be able to log back in. So let's see how that looks like. And as you can see here, kick this out. It is 930 in the morning. So we have to wait another half an hour before we can use the computer. If not, we get logged out. So one of the first features of the parental controls, which was the allowed hours, and it was a schedule that you saw me adjusting before from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. 
It is now past 10 a.m. in the morning where we can go ahead and log in into the machine using the child profile. So let's go ahead and log in and take a look at what are some of the other parental features that are in effect. While our child here opens up Internet Explorer and starts playing around with the computer and browsing the web, there's two things that are in effect. As you recall, we had a timer of only one hour in order to use the computer. So that timer has started as soon as they logged in. So keep that in mind. And then the other thing too is that there's also parental controls on what the child is able to view on the computer. So if you recall, when we were setting up the parental controls, there was things in there such as drugs, gambling, anything along those lines that the child is not able to view. You're gonna see some examples here of the child trying to go into some of those websites and what are the results when they try to access those websites. One of the other features that we're going to look at is the time limit. And as you can see here that the child is playing solitaire, it's been some time and up comes the time limit reached message. And as you can see, and you remember from what we set up before, we only gave our child an hour to play with the computer and it looks like the hour is up. So in about a couple of seconds, the computer will log the child off and the child has the ability to ask for some additional time, as you can see on the screen. Or if they can't have additional time, then they have to wait until the next day in order to be able to use the computer for another hour. The last feature that I want to show you, and as you can see here on my screen, is how to block a specific website. We recently took a look at how we can block content, and you can see that by some of the content that you see here as far as adults, drugs, so on and so forth. We also looked a little bit about how to put time limits on the computer and the individual who's going to be using the computer only had from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in order to use that one hour. But what if you wanted to block a specific website and how do you go about doing that? So the first thing that we're going to do is under the parental controls, we're going to click view allowed sites. And once we're under view allowed sites, you have two options. You have allowed or blocked. And we can go under the blocked section here and we're going to go ahead and click add new and let's say i want to block youtube.com so let's go ahead and put in youtube.com and we're going to click ok with youtube.com added to our block list let's go ahead and close this now we could bring in a web browser and let's head over to youtube.com and so with youtube.com being blocked this is an example how you can take any specific website, add it to the block list, and be able to make sure that whoever you're setting up the parental controls for, they specifically don't have access to the specific website you just added into the blocked sites section. There you have it for today's content. Remember, don't forget to like the video, and as we mentioned, subscribe to the channel so you're up to date on all the latest content that we post to the channel on all things engineering, technology, and finance. Finally, don't forget to share the video with friends and family. We always say this, we don't wanna hoard the knowledge for ourselves, we want everybody to learn. So make sure you share the video with friends and family, and we'll see you on the next video.